Now the next step is the really fun part and that's painting. For my paintbrush I am using a Kling On F30 brush. Very very soft bristles. I sell these on my website. Pick one up. I love them. But you just get a little bit of paint on your brush and you just start painting it on. And what you'll notice is that even though milk paint is a thinner type of paint, it has amazing coverage. And again, this color that I'm using is called Schloss. It's a German word that means castle. And it's a really beautiful, warm, grayish color. This is the step where you would notice if your paint is too thin or too thick. If you're painting this out and it's kind of like painting with skim milk, then it's too thin. You have to go back and add more powder. If you're painting it out and it seems like it's really thick and it's just extra goopy and there's a ton of sediment in there, then you need to go back and add a little bit more water. This is my first coat of Schloss and if you notice as I pan across my table, it's very uneven. It's a little streaky. Um, it's not exactly looking completely opaque. That is completely normal for your first coat of Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint. The first coat is always a little bit ugly, <laughs> dare I say, and when you put the second coat on, that's when everything really starts to come together. And it doesn't take terribly long to dry. This was dried to the touch in about 30 minutes. Let me show you just how great that second coat looks. Let's get some right up here. Let's come in a little closer. Now, look at that. Look at that compared to this. This is the look you're going for. So when you do your first coat and you see this, don't be afraid. Your second coat is going to give you that beautiful coverage that you're aiming for. Our table has two coats of Miss Mustard Seeds Schloss on it, and it's currently on my work table. Um, I let it sit overnight and dry, and now it's time to start the finishing process. So this is the stage where number one, we make our piece buttery soft. Number two, we do some distressing to rub away paint from the edges if we want to. And three, we put a protective top coat on. So my trick for getting a buttery soft finish is by using a very gentle grit of sandpaper to gently smooth sand your piece. I prefer using either 400 grit sandpaper or a 220 grit sanding pad. There is a difference. Look. A sanding pad has this little layer of foam compared to sandpaper, which is literally just a piece of paper, right? Now, when you're smooth sanding, you are simply taking your sandpaper and you are gently rubbing down the surface. When you do this, you will feel a noticeable difference between where you smooth sanded and where you did not. You're not pressing very hard. You're not trying to take paint off. This is to smooth out the surface of your piece. And again, it's just a real gentle, light sanding. And I, I like to go back over my piece and feel it to see if I missed any spots. And I'm just gonna continue all over the table. Once your piece is all smooth, you can come back with a more aggressive grit of sandpaper and start to do some distressing. That's where we rub away the edges of our piece and we start to take paint off intentionally to simulate the look of age and wear and tear. My favorite way to distress is to take my sandpaper and to rub away the edges of my piece. And I typically like to use a very light touch. I don't go crazy aggressive with my distressing. Just a little bit here and there to simulate again the look of age. So if we zoom in and take a look at what I did, you can see it's not very much. Just a little bit around the edges is what I like. 
Now you rub away as much as you personally like. Distressing is where you get to add personality to your piece. Now when it comes to doing turned surfaces like legs and spindles, I like to take my sandpaper and either go up and down vertically or wrap it around the piece horizontally to distress this part right here. So if I go up and down, I'll create a distressing pattern like this. And then what I like to do is if I go up and down, I'll do that for a little bit and then I'll soften it by going horizontally. So it doesn't look like I've taken all the paint off in the same direction. I want this to look as natural as possible. And I try to stay away from the long sections of a table leg. I don't really do much distressing on this long part. I personally just like to do the round bits right here. When you paint with the drawers in, not that much seeps beyond the front of the drawer and onto the top or the sides. So to clean that up, I just take a piece of sandpaper, and sand away the excess to create a nice straight line. So compare this to this. It takes no time at all. And I do the same thing on the side. When I distress, my personal goal is to draw the eye to the shape of the piece that I'm working on. So if you look at this drawer, like before I distress this, it looks like a flat fronted drawer, right? But there's actually this really beautiful bevel pan paneling pattern, whatever you want to call it, on the front of this drawer. It actually is not a flat piece of wood. And until I distress this piece, you wouldn't have been able to see that. Thank you.